Greetings. How are we this morning? I'm very well, thank you very much. We just put our music in order there. And uh, the equipment operator is still to come. But I think we can actually start with our worship. And you'll see how things go. Somebody said, Reach for the top because the bottom is overcrowded. Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before the throne of your grace. Knowing very well that you are our Lord, our God, our Master, and our King. We come before you to worship you and to give you glory. Hear us as we lift up our voices, as we play the music, as we prepare our minds, and as we clap our hands and move our feet. So that when we leave this place, we leave this place with praise in our hearts. We therefore invoke your presence and ask you to join us. Sing with us, talk to us, open our minds and our hearts that we may indeed feel your presence. For well, there is nine like you. And in the silence of our hearts, we, we ask you to forgive us, for we, we have sinned against you and against one another. We have not loved our neighbors as we should have loved our neighbors. We have not walked upright. We have preached the word, but we have denied the power thereof. We have pronounced healing, but we have denounced the power thereof. Lord, help our unbelief as we ask for forgiveness of our sins. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may save you in of life, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tell your neighbor, your, your spouse, your children, your sins are forgiven. Yeah, tell them. Yeah? Tell your neighbor your sins are forgiven. Don't forget to tell 
yourself might as well are forgiven. Amen. I want to wait and see our first music. Still waiting. Yeah, let's do it on the screen. Can we? Alright, do it on the screen. Come, let's watch it, okay? If you can't sing the words, then just come for me.
we take our seats. We listen now to the word of God. Oh yes, the Sunday school children. It's time for you to go for Sunday school. Yeah. We sing the grapes to gardens. We go to the gardens. Sunday school, yes. Chapter 17, verse 22. Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 22. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of the cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender spring from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. 
They will find shelter in the shade of his branches. All the trees of the field will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make dry the tree that flourishes. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. In the New Testament, the Gospel according to St. Mark, we are reading in chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps and gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces corn, first the stalk, then the ear, then the full kernel in the ear. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground, Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. May the good Lord, the God of grace, bless to us. The ring of his word and to him be the glory and honor and power and dominion. Let the church say Amen. amen. Good, good Father. Good, good Father. We praise the Lord.
I think we need your voice there, not your fingers there. <laughs> well done, I heard you say. Fuck. We are meeting today on the third Sunday after Pentecost. Remember that at Pentecost we celebrated the birth of the church after Jesus had promised the Holy Spirit and he, the Holy Spirit, descended upon his disciples on Pentecost Day. We are now in a season after Pentecost. And for 24 weeks, we will, ex we will celebrate the existence of the church and will recall her mission into the world. What is our color for the 24 weeks? What color is this? Green. 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 And what does green stand for? Growth, prosperity, green. Things are happening. So for the 24 weeks, our color is green. Because the church is growing. And the mission is being accomplished. Today in our scripture readings, we looked at Mark chapter 4, and there Jesus speaks about the kingdom of God. It is called the Basileia in Latin, the sovereignty of God, the rule of God. The reign of God. Not the reign, that's for us, but the reign of God. But because no mind can comprehend what really the kingdom of God is like. We, we can't comprehend. So Jesus, in explaining what the kingdom of God is like, he uses what you call parables. What are parables? Parables are earthly stories with the heavenly meaning. So Jesus tells three parables to actually explain what the kingdom of God is like. He starts by sowing and he comes into growing and he finishes off with maturing. So you plant, you grow, you harvest. And I think that Jesus is a farmer. All right, we're a farming community, right? I'm an, I'm an ecologist myself. I don't understand farming, but I think we understand the growth of a plant. So he speaks about sowing. He says, a farmer went out to sow, to plant the seed. So as he planted the seed, some of the seed fell on dry ground. The birds came in, they ate it. The other seed came, fell on the dry ground. It just didn't get any roots under, so it died. Some seed fell on a rocky place. It couldn't take any root, so it died as well. Some seed fell on 
A place with lots of thorns. But the thorns just thrown on it. And it couldn't germinate. And yet some seed fell on fertile ground. And they it multiplied. And maybe the question is, was there anything wrong with the seed? No. Was there anything wrong with the soil? <laughs> yes. So it's the same seed that fell on the different kinds of soil. And in explaining the kingdom of God, Jesus says, the seed, let's say, God is the farmer. The seed is his word. And the soil is the heart. Whose heart? So the farmer is now throwing the seed, the word of God. And that seed has got to germinate. So the soil has got to, make, has got to be made to be relevant and fertile for the seed to grow. When we preach the word, how does your heart receive the word? Because your heart and mind are the soil on which you see. Maybe your heart is actually getting a seed picked up by the birds. But as you listen to the word, you hear it, it comes through this ear, it goes out through the other ear. I say it was a nice thing in church, but actually, when I heard the preacher say, oh, he really preached. He was a moving preacher. What did you say? Well, he moved, yeah? <laughs> it has come in, it has gone out. The birds have just been done. So Jesus says, in this parable, the seed is planted on the soil. And he says in the second parable, when the seed has been sown in the soil, it has to grow. So next time you plant, you, you, you pick up a, uh, is it an orange? Is it an orange? Yeah, you pick up an orange and you, 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 you look at that one fruit and you say, this is an orange. You eat the orange and you spread the seeds. You realize in actual fact it was one seed that was planted. But in that, in that fruit, in that orange, there are many seeds. And you plant those seeds, they become an orchard. And you plant those seeds, and they become a huge forest. From one to the orchard to the forest. Because the seed grows. So Jesus says, when the word is preached, it has to grow. And when the word grows in you, your character is shaped. But you've got to depend on the word. And when the seed has grown, Ezekiel chapter 17 says, it becomes a huge big tree. Actually forget that it was that little seed. And he actually picks up on the master seed, the smallest seed ever. And he says, don't ever dare look down on that little master seed because it can grow and become a big, huge tree. And actually from the forest as well. In actual fact, you can have your birds nest on. Or you can have your animals rest under the shade. Seeds. The kingdom of God. Do they connect? Do they make sense? Yes. It makes sense. Because when the kingdom of God is planted in you, it will grow relentlessly and unseen. Sometimes we make, we, 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 we get into a problem where we say, I will plant it, I want to see the results. But, but, but God says, just plant and the results are mine. Just plant and the growth is mine. 
So when the seed is planted, the kingdom of God just grows in you relentlessly and it will become big. You will have no power to grow it. You just have the power to plant it. So what does that mean? We are co-creators together with God. So the, those kingdoms will grow relentlessly and unseen and independent of us. So that when God looks at the beautiful sea, he sees it has grown. And we stand in awe and amazement and say, wow, this is what God has done. During this time of the growth of the church, during this time of the green, during this time when the seed is being planted, we begin to ask questions. What seed are you planting? At home, as family, what seed do you plant to your children? At Winterberg, what seed do you plant to your colleagues? We are told that this seed that we should plant, we should plant the seed with prayer, we should plant the seed of evangelism, we should plant the seed of good works. So that when men see your good works, they will believe in God who is the Father. Somebody say, praise the Lord. It's because of the seed of the good works. I, 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 I always think that when, when you grow your child and you always speak ugly, you are planting a seed of ugliness. One, 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 one lady raised a child by herself and, 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 and the father became an absent father and the admiral did not look after the child and the dad kept saying to kept saying to, to the child your father is a dog the father is a dog one day the father arrived and just got home and the child was busy behind the father and the father was asking, what are you looking for behind me? He said, no, I'm looking for a tail, because I'm always telling you the dog. The words that you speak, you plant in your seed. The things that we do, we plant in your seed. So we should plant seeds with humility, seeds with grandeur, so that they can glorify God. Hence, the humble tree in Ezekiel chapter 17. We are told that as the seed is planted, we should not despise the small beginnings. You might plant love and plant love to the person who does not want love, but the seed will ultimately germinate. Do not despise the small beginning. Stay there. Keep planting that seed of love. Because when it ends up germinating, it will grow and become a big, big tree. And it also, it also shows that, that our Lord is, is not remote. He's not far from the things that we do. He actually is in the midst of planting the seed. Hence is able when you when you when you plant it and when you water it as it grows, it's actually God who is growing it. Let the seed of love be grown in each and every soul. Let the seed of justice be, 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 be planted and begin to grow in each and every soul. Let the, the seed of peace. Can you imagine how much peace? we would have if each and every family planted the seed of peace. It is our responsibility to plant that seed, to sow that seed 
in our daily lives. Let's not get impatient now. Let's keep on until God shows us what needs to be done. He says, you will not see the seed growing. It is hidden. It is mysterious because it is about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God grows in our lives. As we put on our green, as we go back to our homes, let's begin. Every, let's begin to understand every word you say, you're planting. Every action you do, you're planting. But what seed are you planting? Somebody said, somebody said, do not celebrate my harvest before you know my seed. Maybe you have sown in vain and in tears. But at the end of the day, you will reap with joy. Do you see the kingdom of God in your life? Like a seed. The kingdom doesn't come at once. It comes in stages. The Mark says, it takes the root, it breaks the ground, you have your stock, you have your branches because it comes in stages. Ultimately, you have your grain. Ours is to watch, to be vigilant, to pray, and to service the sin. As I conclude, our role, our role is to sow seeds. Do not be preoccupied with the harvest. Sometimes we preach and we think, oh my God, these children from Winterberg are not listening. Because now they're thinking about exams and about coronavirus, about dormitories, about this, that, and the other. But when we wait upon God, we might find one, two, or three of them coming back and say, Reverend, we want to start a confirmation class. Because a seed has been planted and it has germinated in us, we now want it to grow. Take root, become a star, have branches, and then the grain. Let's not worry about the harvest, it is for God. Sometimes we might have teenagers who, who, who will present themselves and say, Reverend, we want to come and understand the inner person that God has put in us. Maybe the women's group will go out and raise funds and say, we want to plant the seed somewhere in Makaleni or Kanduri so that everyone understands the word of God. What seed are you planting? Your words, your actions. Jesus says, plant the seed of love, peace, and justice in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We realize today, Heavenly Father, as the church grows, that we are actually being given the responsibility to plant that seed. You are the farmer. The seed is your word. And the soil is our hearts. Help us, therefore, to understand that our responsibility is to continue to preach your word to speak about your word, to use your word to encourage others so that the seed will be planted. And when it is, it will grow and become a big, huge tree. Help us this week going forward to plant seeds, the seeds that are the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name.
Are there any intimations? Birthdays? No one is born. You see, nobody, nobody gets born after I've been born. You see, you've got to wait for July. The baby is up. Come, 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 come. Get a chocolate. I actually got two last week. <laughs> Look, and it was my wife's birthday yesterday. Yesterday? Yes. Please rise and come forward. Morensha. Oh, there you are. Hi. Give me up. Yeah, you ain't there. The chocolate is coming now. Thank you very much. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you. And this is for you for yesterday. Camera spread. It is a tradition of St. John's United to celebrate the birthdays of everyone. Even I was pumped up with lots of lovely words, encouraging words, and indeed a seed was planted. It might seem that we're just giving away chocolate, but in actual fact, these children and this lady will know that there is love in the house of God. It's not about chocolate, it's about the love that comes from the house where the people of God gather to worship. Thank you for planting this seed. We pray that it might germinate and grow and become a big, huge tree. Love them, defend them, and walk with them in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll give it a little chocolate. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this concludes our worship. If there are no further announcements, then we sing the closing hymn, Reckless Love. Reckless Love.